Welcome to Holly Sniper EFI Training Part 22. This training module, we're gonna take a look at working with our idle control and tuning found within our Sniper EFI systems. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check out working with our idle control. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our idle control tuning within our Holly Sniper EFI system. Our idle control is very simplistic within the Sniper. We have a few details we need to pay attention to in order to adjust either things mechanically or virtually in our setup and configuration controlling our engine with our sniper. Let's jump in and take a look at our idle control tables, talk about what they mean, what they represent, and then we're gonna make sure we understand when we're making changes, why we're making them. We're gonna look at uh, getting online with the engine as it's idling and understanding some of our parameter values down here in our idle tuning window so that we understand, again, what to look for when we need to make adjustments. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Let's jump in and take a look. So what we're gonna do is jump up here in the very top of whatever the file you have open in your software. It's gonna be into the idle ICF. So we're gonna jump over here into the idle ICF icon. And then we find we have three separate areas to program for our idle control. We have our idle speed, IC parked, and IC settings. Let's first talk about what's going on within our idle control routine with our sniper. And then we can talk about the IC parked, what the idle speed means, and then some of our programming language in here. So first thing we need to understand is that we have an integrated idle control solenoid within the Holly Sniper throttle body assembly. Idle control motor is gonna be a controlled vacuum leak. It's gonna create a vacuum leak that's going to allow airflow to bypass the throttle plate. So if you were to open up your throttle plates and allow a bunch of airflow in, you know your engine speed's gonna go up, engine produces more torque, and we'll find that basic kind of effect as we have more airflow coming into the engine. The same thing will happen with an idle control motor where we're allowing more airflow in, but we're not touching our throttle blade or throttle plates. We're gonna find that the idle control motor is a controlled vacuum leak that we're gonna be controlling virtually. It can be controlled in a zero to 100% scale. Zero percent means that we have no vacuum leak. 100 means we have full vacuum leak through the idle control solenoid, and somewhere like 20 or 50 or 80 is somewhere between fully closed and fully open. And it is a relatively linear control, meaning if I go ahead and command 20% from the idle control motor, it'll give me about 20% more airflow. And then we should find that 20% uh, more airflow relative to what the idle control motor can flow through airflow. And we will have an increase in idle speed. So as we go up higher and higher in the value, we'll have more idle speed increase because we have more airflow coming into the engine and we're producing more torque in idle conditions. What we wanna find is that we have our parameters set very specifically so that the idle control motor is used for cold start assistance or startup assistance in general, whether hot or cold, as well as allowing the engine to have an offset to be able to come back into idle a little bit more gradual, a little bit more slowly. So we're gonna be using this in very specific circumstances. Now it does require us to pay attention to some details and that's going to be when the engine's actually running, we wanna pay attention to what our IC position is going to read. So on a warm engine, we wanna find that this IC position is anywhere between five to 10%. Now, if it's gonna be much less than that, if it's gonna be zero, let's say, for example, and our idle speed seems a bit high, that means mechanically you have too much airflow coming into your engine. So the idle control motor is closed and we have a vacuum leak somewhere. That vacuum leak could be an actual vacuum leak where gasket's not sealing on the intake manifold, or it simply might mean that we have too much opening on our throttle plate and we need to reduce our throttle stop on our sniper system. Now, alternatively, if you're finding that your IEC position is outside of that five to 10% range on a warm idle, that means you need to adjust that throttle stop further open so that we have more airflow coming into the engine and more idle torque, and we'll find that that'll put us in the correct orientation or position where the sniper was actually designed to run. So what we're looking for on a warm engine when we're idling is that the IEC position is anywhere between five to 10%. I usually like to try to get closer to 5%. So what we need to do in order to make sure it's adjusted properly, we'll get the engine up to operating temperature. And if you're finding that again, your IEC position here is 20, 40, 60%, that means we need more airflow. We'll adjust the throttle stop so that we have our throttle plates open more and more What's going to happen is as we're adjusting that throttle stop and we're allowing more airflow into the engine, 
the TPS sensor is going to start to become un uncalibrated. You need to go perform a TPS auto set or recalibration of the throttle position being the new zero position relative to the throttle blades being open more from that set screw. In order to do that, all we need to do is power cycle our sniper system. So every time you turn the key off, wait a few seconds, turn the key on, if as long as you're not on the throttle, the Holly will relearn what that throttle position sensor is, is supposed to be reading at your closed throttle and make sure that that's gonna be relative to 0%. If you're familiar with the HP or Dominator, thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.